Back 20 years ago, bows were lucky to shoot 180 feet per second, and now the, some of your slower bows will shoot 280 feet per second. Most of the average people with a hunting setup now, it's really easy to shoot between 270 and 300 feet per second. Welcome to the Adler.tv show. I'm Chris Adler and every week I host and post a new episode with a new guest in a new location. That's every Thursday on my website, Adler.tv. Today's guest is Ben Cox. He's the archery pro at Hoover Tactical Firearms in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, ladies, this might seem like a man-only podcast, but we're going to talk about archery for women and for kids and all kinds of stuff. Archery and bow hunting, this is a hobby that's enjoyed by Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence, Joe Rogan, Bo Jackson, and Ava Longoria. It's for everybody. It's really fun. Kids can in get into it too. We're going to talk about that too. So I met Ben Cox at Hoover Tactical in the Archery Pro Shop and the 3D Archery Range area where things stay pretty quiet, but we are next door to the pistol and rifle ranges. So in the background, you're going to hear occasionally guns going off and arrows being fired too. Listen to the difference. Guns and arrows. Oh, I love how quiet arrows are. It's amazing. Uh, guns go boom. Arrows go it's great. Anyway, here's archery for dummies. Look where I am. In a place that I probably don't fit in that great, I am here at Hoover Tactical Firearms in Hoover, Alabama to discuss how to buy a bow for whether it's target practice or for hunting purposes. This is archery for dummies. I'm the dummy and we got Mr. Cox here to discuss it all with us. Thanks for being willing to uh, talk to me, man, no and, and send me through the ropes here. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little fresh, a little new. You're right. Um, I, I shot uh, some, did some archery back in the day at camp here and there, but that was not with the compound bows that we see now. We see crazy gears and pulleys and science being used so, so that the pullback is not nearly what the inertia that comes from it. That's right. It's crazy. Uh, first of all, I was given your name by a friend of mine who's a black belt in jujitsu. It always comes back to jujitsu <laughs> on the podcast. And he said, I was like, hey, hey, man, you do a little bit of arch archery hunting, a little bit of bow hunting. Uh, what, what would you suggest for a brand? And he was like, man, I'm not even going to try to have that conversation. Check this guy out up, up at Hoover Tactical. He knows what he's doing. So you've killed a turkey in how many states? 13 now. 13 states. Yeah. You've killed a turkey. Yeah. Why? Because I want to kill one in every state. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to a few more next week. Well, that's great. You and your son get out. And <laughs> yeah. Do it. yeah. That's awesome, man. That's a great... Uh, a, a great little hobby that you guys can both get into. It's a heck of a bucket list. It's going to take a few years to do, but yeah, you know, we're getting there. There you go. There if we can go. get three next week, that's three more. There you go. So. That's great, man. That's awesome. Uh, how long have you been working at Hoover Tactical? About two years. How long have you been working in hunting or working? What do you? What would you call it? Working in outdoorery? Uh, right. Outdoorery. Kind of the outdoor industry. Okay. Um, twelve years probably. Yeah. About yeah. Twelve years at least. Part time, anyway. And how long have you been hunting? Since I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, Thirty-five plus years now. There you go. Yeah, long time. Oh, cool. Well, it's, I'm glad I'm asking you and not just you know just trying to figure it out on my own. <laughs> I came in here. I guess it was maybe two weeks ago. I came in here, and I'm a, I'm a big hobby guy. I think that filling your time with productive things is a great way to live. I think God made the world interesting, so let's let's check it out. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let's let's get into it. Let's learn about it. And uh, one of the hobbies that I've been really wanting to get into is archery. Um, I love that I can set up a target in my backyard and, and shoot it. And I love that it is the repetition that you have to put into it to get good at it. It seems like it's a very steep learning curve. And I'm, I like difficult things that you can kind of see yourself getting better at just a little bit at a time. I love that kind of stuff. So I came here and you gave me about two hours, maybe even two and a half hours of of information that i really should have just recorded that whole right. thing but uh, i was like you know what man i'm gonna get a bow and i'll be back also can i bring some cameras when i come to buy the bow can i bring some cameras because i think this would be a cool a cool podcast so that's right that's how we got to where we are right now today cool so tell me what is like what what's the first thing a person needs to think about when they're wanting to maybe get into this 
I would say the first thing you would want to know is, is your main goal just to shoot targets in your backyard or if you have some intentions of hunting. Obviously, there's a lot of bows that will do either. But for a lot of women and kids around the area that has been picking up archery lately and they just want to shoot in the yard, probably never going to go hunting with it. So we can kind of lean them in the direction that's probably a little less expensive and a little more basic. Yeah. And then if you not hunting now but intend to hunt then we can get you in a bow that's suitable for shooting targets and we'll work for hunting too yeah. and uh, we'll get you going in that direction because most of your compound bows unless you buy a bright colored target bow that's orange pink yeah, yeah. they come in all colors then you can hunt with them. and he and pink so, is serious pink yes. is serious women l women love it purple's their color now but pink was for a little while so we'll see what their next one is i think it'll be teal in a couple of years but <laughs> <laughs> um pink archery accessories were the first ones hit the market for women and because we had a big uh i think they say that the fastest growth in archery right now still is the women so what do you think brought me, <laughs> me here today <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I noticed that, man. It was crazy to see, like, the explosion of just, like, pink and camo products you just come into the marketplace. They're like, oh, there's there's people that want this stuff. And so they made it. And Camo clothes with pink trim. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> the bow that I decided to get is not a women's bow. No. Okay, that's no. good, that's it good. not. All right. Unlike awesome. your motorcycle. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you, Bubba. Thank you so much. Sorry. That's okay, that's okay. It's a 1200cc. 1200cc, can't stress to you how big of a V-twin that is. This is a 70 pound compound bow. Okay. And it is a men's compound bow. Okay, good, good. So. And so what does that mean? 70 pound, what does that mean? And compound bow, what does that mean? Compound bow means you've got your cams. And what are the cams? Cams are what drives the bow. That's where your energy comes from. You'll see them in different shapes. Some are rounder, some are more oblong. Uh, they use different designs for different speeds. Um, some are going to have smoother draws. Some will be a little stiffer, usually your stiffer more oblong looking cams have a are faster um, depending on the cam design that's where most of your speed from your bow comes from it really it looks like a really nice pulley almost it is um, it's harnessed with two different cables and a and the main string and they work together to um, you set your draw weight on these bows when you draw unlike a recurve or a longbow when you draw this bow back and you pull through that 70 pounds when you get to full draw you're only holding about 15 on this bow so you you have the bow in your hands you pull back on the drive string is that what you call it yeah just the main string the main string pull back on the main string and once you get close to the end of the pull there is a fall off or what's let off. It? a let off that's right and you get into this zone where you're no longer having to hold back the full 70 pounds that's right and you're in a, you're, you're on the you're on the wall. What is that? You, the, the back wall. When you get wall. to the back, you're going to have a the back wall where the bow sits at full draw, where it does not draw anymore. Yes. Okay. Some bows have a firmer back wall. Some a little softer. Uh, some bows have more let off than others. Sixty-five to ninety percent, most of them, with the average being eighty. I've got this bow set up right now. It's slightly adjustable. You got a couple options on this cam, so I've got it set right at eighty for you. It's set up, you can shoot a little bit faster with a little bit less let off, but 80 is the most comfortable usually. Yeah, uh, you want to be able to have a, a good bit of let off because when you're sitting there aiming, you don't want to have to be holding 70 pounds Correct. in your hand. Correct. Because you're going to be shaking and all kinds of no, stuff. It's like shooting a 70 pound recurve with no let off is almost impossible. There's a few guys that can do it, but they shoot all the time. Yeah. Non-stop with your recurves. And in the olden times, if I could use that historical times. term, you really, uh, you, when you were pulling a bow back, you were just using the bending of the, the oh, bow itself. Right. Yeah. The, and you could theoretically just keep pulling and pulling and pulling. That's right. No draw stop. No back wall like you get with these. It, with this, you're like within a mechanism that's almost like... Uh, a mouse traps are all the way, you know, right. wound up. It's, you're not going to wind it up more. It's set. It's ready to go. And then you hit the little clicker and, you know, 
I don't know why I made that sound or why I called it a clicker. So let's go back to the let's go back to the archery pro here. How do you determine what size bow is right for a person? You just got to make sure that you can draw the weight comfortably on this. And when you're here with last week, I let you draw a 60 pound bow and it was not that much for you. So when you buy a 70 pound bow, I'm, I'm pretty jacked, were, <laughs> pretty, pretty jacked. They would generally go down. A lot of them will only go down 10 or 12 pounds from being maxed out. This particular bow will go down about 15, maybe 20. Um, you got to have the draw weight set right and then the draw length. This bow has, the cams have modules on them that adjust the draw length of the bow. They have draw stops so that once it rolls over, it stops at a certain point. This particular bow goes from 24 and a half to 30 inches. That's going to cover most people. Um, we've got you set up at 27. That's what we determined last time you were here. So you're right in the middle of that on this bow. And that's going to be, for each person, it's going to be a little bit different. And if you're going to get kind of serious into these compound bows, you want to make sure that you know what your draw length is and you have a bow that fits that. That fits. You can't shoot a bow that doesn't fit you really well. Um, and it varies. You're going to have an anchor spot depending on the type of release you use and somewhere around your face when you come to full draw. And fully extended out, you want your arm not locked out, just slightly bent. And then this is your draw length from about the front of your mouth or the back corner of your mouth to the bow hand. And well, let's just assume that uh, we're talking people that are right-handed, you know, norm normal handed. Well, I shouldn't say normal handed <laughs> for all the left-handed people out there. Uh, most bows are set up for right-handed people so that you're actually pulling the arrow back with your right hand, you're holding the bow with your left hand. Yes. Uh, and so when he says that your arm needs to be bent, that's the left hand. The left arm. Left arm. Because right. you don't want your elbow kind of hanging out there. Yeah, you don't want to, you lose, the proper way to fire an arrow is to be pushing against the grip of the bow and pulling into the back wall at the same time. And if you lock your arm all the way out, then you lose the ability to push. You don't want to bend your arm. You just want to, you want to have enough that you can still push when you're shooting. You're supposed to use your back muscles. It's called back tension to fire a bow so you can push and pull at the same time to execute the shot. But if you get a draw length that's too long for you, you get your shoulder up and you get your arm locked out. And then you also have a tendency to hit your arm with a string, which cannot be very fun. I've uh, uh, seen some nasty nasty spots uh, and bruises and yeah yeah folks uh when you let go of that arrow there's a string carrying that arrow very rapidly and if your hand or if your left arm that's holding the bow is in the wrong position that string is going to slide from your about the crease in your elbow all the way up to your watch and it's going to be real you're going to be really sad now we have guards for that we have arm guards for that to keep that from happening and it's good for a beginner to Start out with one, but if you're shooting a compound bow uh, with proper form nowadays, you shouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah. But I it's do. good to start with one just so you don't, because once you get burned, then you get a little bit leery and, you know, I've seen people want to quit shooting from it before, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely start out with an arm guard. <laughs> and women, especially, a lot of women have to shoot them all the time because they're, uh, a lot of them are double jointed, so when they stick their arm out, their elbow actually kicks the opposite way. Yeah. See it on a regular basis, probably 90% of women we set up a bow for, when they stick their arm out, their elbow actually comes this way. Proper grip, proper bow grip, and your holding arm is just, will completely determine whether or not you're hitting it or not. For people that have never shot an arrow or shot a bow before, um, would you compare it to like, it's something that you have to practice doing the exact same way over and over again until you get, it's just muscle memory and it's, you're, you're, it's perfect. You know, you know how to do it. You know where it, that arrow is going to go. Just when you pull it back, you draw it back. Would it be like putting a really long putt over and over again? What, what's, do you have a good illustration? Hmm. I would guess it would be similar to putting. Um, it is definitely a repetition. It is a lot of muscle memory. You're going to work some muscles that you've not used for anything else before and take some time to build those. But as long as you do this four or five times a week when you first start out, you will build those muscles pretty quick. But yeah, I guess it could be similar to putting because you've got to 
basically your grip, draw, anchor, shot execution, all has to be the exact same every time you do it. There's really no room to vary there. Any variance you have will show up on your target. So let's make it a little bit cooler. Let's say it's like driving, going to a driving range. Let's make it a little bit more violent. That would be, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I definitely don't want me hitting golf balls for you. Okay. It would be right. it would be very violent. Yeah, I'm not a big golf guy, man. Mm -hmm. I uh I know some people love it. They get out there and and they're they're just all about it. And I go to a, a, a driving range or you know a driving range. Yeah, I go to a driving range. I'm there for 45 minutes. I'm ready to go, man. I'm like, this is cool. I'm good. Yeah, I can go hit a few golf balls, but mine tend to go this way. Or this way, <laughs> a lot more often than they go that way. <laughs> so some things you you know you figure out how to do. I figured out how to shoot a bow and make it work. I never figured out how to hit a golf ball straight. So <laughs> tried it for a few years, but I just gave up. Sold my clothes 15 years ago and ain't looked back. There you go, man. That's great. Yeah, uh, I just man, I can, especially if we don't have a cart. What are we doing now? We're just hiking with a bag on our backs for no reason. <laughs> Once you figure out what somebody can pull back and you figure out what their draw length needs to be, um, what kind of, uh, that's, you're pretty much there as far as what, if you need, what you well, need to know? That's the main thing, yes. Okay. As far as getting a bow that fits. And what kind of, what kind of uh, like, uh, pull, what's it called, the, the weight that you have to pull back? You're talking about the release? Not the release, just like the pull it of itself, like a 70 or... Oh, the draw weight. Draw That's weight. That's draw weight. That's right. Draw weight, draw length. What? That would be your poundage and then your length in inches of your draw. So what's the draw weight of your... What I shoot? Yeah, what you shoot. Most of my hunting bows are 80-pound bows. Okay. Watch out. Boss Hoss <laughs> coming through with his 80 pounds. <laughs> for so, tournaments, I usually just shoot 70 okay. for competition. For And that's target? Targets, yes. Okay. 3D. We mostly shoot the 3D. You remember how in Robin Hood, the old school, old school Robin Hood cartoons, he would shoot an arrow and then shoot an arrow right in the back of it? Have you ever done that? Oh, yes. Are you serious? Yeah, it happens here all the time. There's still a few hanging on the wall there. Nice. Very possible. Awesome. Yeah. It's just expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Arrows are expensive. <laughs> We're not chiseling them out of trees and, and uh, rolling them at the hut like Robin Hood did. So right, right. We're spending... Eight to twenty dollars per arrow. So when you're busting them up, it gets expensive. So try not to do that. So eight to twenty bucks per arrow, and then um, what? How much is a general bow? A bow generally cost <sighs> ranges from four hundred, four hundred fifty dollars to get a package bow set up, ready to go, kind of low end, entry level stuff. Up to, I mean, top end target bows are eighteen hundred dollars without accessories. Then you can put another thousand dollars worth of accessories on them. So the sky's the limit. You spend a lot of money on one. I would say the average guy that hunts is probably looking at a twelve to fifteen hundred dollar setup for high end type bows with hunting accessories. So uh, with the bow that I've got here, what kind of lifespan is it going to have, and what kind of like maintenance needs to occur on it? As far as lifespan, it'll last as long as you let it. Um, if you'll take care of it, really nothing that's going to go wrong. The only thing you have to swap out on a bow is the strings occasionally. And kind of like the tires on your car. Everything else here is, is pretty much solid. You probably get two to three years on a set of strings. If you shoot a lot, you're going to have to change them more often than that. I would say the average person is probably safe swapping strings every three years. Keeping these strings waxed is the only thing you have to do to them. Other than that, keeping the dirt off your bow is about all the maintenance you've got. Pretty simple. Yeah, I did, I did like the... Um just kind of like dry physical nature of them. You know, you don't have like uh, anything. You can't really, see. you can kind of see everything working. I, I like that about that. I like that about motorcycles. I like that about bows. You can kind of see everything. It's not like everything. a gun that you've got to pull apart and, and, and clean everything. So you can wipe this down if it gets dusty or dirty and wax your strings and it's good. That's all you got to do. Question about bow hunters versus gun, people that shoot rifles, guns, that kind of thing. Um, a bow has shorter range. Much. Much shorter range. So basically, bow hunters are just people that just want to make life more difficult on themselves. <laughs> Either that, they're looking for a challenge. Uh, most bow hunters are probably just uh, trying to extend their seasons. 
a lot of states. We our archery season opens before gun season does in Alabama. Um, we have a short bow season, but we have a really long uh, rifle season. Most states, when you get out of the southeast, have very, very short gun seasons, but very long archery seasons. So um, I hunt in Kentucky a lot. They have 16 days they can hunt with a rifle, but you can bow hunt from September through January. So unless you just want to hunt a couple weeks in November, you're going to pick up a bow and do some bow hunting. So definitely more of a challenge. Yeah, more of a challenge. You got to, and it's even, and a bow is even a, 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 a I don't know, just from what I, I have very little knowledge on all this, but um, a crossbow, you pull it back and it locks and stays Correct. and you point it like a rifle. Correct. In this situation, a, a bow bow, you just hold that thing back and you, you, you have to hold it back. You have to hold That's it right. there. Yeah. Crossbow is uh, still a short range weapon, but it's fired like a rifle. You don't have to cock it. There's no, you don't have to use manpower to draw the bow when a deer steps out and hold the bow to shoot it. Makes it a little bit easier. What's the best what's the best kill you've ever experienced with a bow? Wow. The best kill. Like in your mind, just to you. <laughs> um I don't know, I killed a pretty good buck in Kentucky a few years ago. That was it was good. But I've killed a lot of deer with a bow over the years. So a how, lot. how many deer have you killed with a bow? Uh no, no a lot. <laughs> <laughs> way on up there killed my first deer with a bow when i was uh 11 i believe so 31 years of bow hunting i've killed at least one deer a year with a bow since then but um usually last few years i've been mainly hunting with my son so i haven't killed nearly as many but uh i used to kill five six seven eight deer a year with a bow so it adds up <laughs> that's great man so what's the longest What's the longest shot you've been successful with? On, on a deer, 43 yards. And mostly because I won't shoot at them farther than that. Right. Comfortable shooting that far on targets, or much farther than that on targets, but live animals, there's too many uncontrolled variables there. When you release that area, things can happen. So I usually limit my shots 40, 45 yards on, on deer. Some of these uh, arrowheads are fixed, and some of them, like, that's right spring open expandables or mechanicals yeah and what's the difference and why um mechanicals became real popular a few years back um they make it they fly a little better for most people if your bow's not tuned real well mechanical will fly closer to a field point a lot of cases but with a fixed blade broadhead which is generally going to be a tougher head uh usually get better penetration with a with a fixed blade head um if your bow's tuned right with the quality of heads and arrows we have now, you can shoot those just like a field point too. So mechanical sometimes give you a bigger cut, but bigger cut also leads to less penetration. Um, I'm kind of a fixed blade guy. I've played around with both for a while, but fixed blades, there's nothing to go wrong with a fixed blade. Mechanicals are still have some moving parts, and uh, but they, they work great for the most part. All right. You told me something last time I was here, and... I'm new to this, so sometimes I can't tell if people are pulling my leg. So if this is a stupid question, just let me know and I'll cut this all out of the podcast. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, you said that you could send an arrow through one of these center block walls. Um, very possible. Um, shooting uh, an 83-pound bow with a 454-grain arrow and uh, – with arrow design, small diameter arrow shafts that we have now, they're very thick walled, very solid. They keep a lot of that energy right behind that point. Solid steel broadheads are very tough. And I've seen videos of people with 70 pound bows busting center blocks. So yes, yeah, it's just very possible. Whew, that's amazing, man. I did not know that was even a possibility. I was like, later I was thinking about that and I was like, was he messing with me? No, I no, <laughs> no. You, I've seen videos of people shooting them through car doors. You can find a junk car door. I mean, um, arrows are tough. Some of your broad hits out there are tough. I mean, you can shoot them through a lot of stuff. A lot of energy behind them. A lot. It's just science. <laughs> it's just science. <laughs> So you mentioned the grain of an arrow. Right. Uh, that's just weight? It is. Everything archery related is uh, arrow-wise is measured in grains, kind of like your bullets. Um, I don't think we measure many other things around in grains, but bullets and, and arrows. 
So that's literally, I mean, I've heard grain, you know, with, with, in regard to bullets, uh, like, you know, my whole life growing up. But a grain is literally a unit of measurement. Correct. Oh, wow. Okay. Very light, very small. And so what's the range of grains of arrows? Uh, it depends. You're going to match the grains, the weight of your arrow to how much poundage you're shooting to. So uh, typically most people are going to be shooting between 300 and 500 grain arrows when they're built, ready to go. And that would be like, you know, you got if you're shooting a... A rifle with 150 grain bullets. So basically, you can look at an arrow only weighing maybe two to three times as much as as most hunting bullets. So they're not that heavy to be the size they are. Yeah, yeah. And what is it? What's it made out of? Most carbon. Of most most all your arrows now are solid carbon. So they're very lightweight. Most of your weight is in the tip. Wow. So you'll have a hundred grain tip, and then the rest of your weight is in the arrow. And the feathers on that are on the back of the arrow. It's not called feathers. It's called... They're not feathers. Because they're not feathers. We, we have some with feathers. The traditional guys that shoot the recurves and longbows, they still shoot arrows with feathers. But nowadays, they're all plastic veins. So oh. They're stiff plastic. Uh, you don't have to worry about the rain as much as you would with feathers, and they control an arrow very well. But can you still pull back two arrows, lick the feather of one of those arrows, to shoot two arrows at the same time, and kill two bad guys. You, you can try that with your recurves and longbows, but do not try that with a compound. Okay, all Because right. you will probably bring it back for me to put your strings back on your camps. Oh, uh, that would be bad. Yeah. Okay. Proper way to grip a bow, although the grip is straight up and down, would be to set your hand in with your knuckles at about a 45 degree angle to the ground. Just like that. So if the bow is facing straight down at six o'clock, the actual alignment of your knuckles that's holding it is actually kind of cocked out to more like, uh, like 730, something like that. Pretty much. Your knuckles are kind of pointing there. Okay. Basically, most people teach your, with your fingers wrapped around your index finger should be pointed at the ground. If you're gripping the bow and your index finger is pointing to the side, then you're gripping too much of the bow. Gotcha. So you really just want a relaxed grip with the bow just sitting right there at full drop. Cool. If you grab the bow, you cause torque, which will cause a lot of left and right issues on target when you're shooting. So that's probably the most important thing that you're gonna, gonna wanna perfect when you're shooting is figuring out how to grip the bow, where it sits in your hand without torquing it, and just make sure you don't grab it. New, new people that shoot, they want to hold the bow. They want to white knuckle it and hold on to it and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. But the proper way would be to just relax your hand and let it sit right there while you're shooting. Nice. Um, and then you've got the the main string. What is that called again? Just string. Just the string. Your string. Okay. That's your bow string. The, just your bow string there. It has a place for a notch for you to put the arrow. That's right. That's a string loop. Your arrow would actually sit right inside the string loop. And then on the back side, there's a loop for you to actually... I should have had a release handy. Is that okay? Well, this is a fake release. It does not fire, but cool. if you had a release that had a actual trigger on it, yeah, they hook in here. So this would be where you draw the bow from. That's right. So the release is directly behind the arrow. And... With a working release, you pull the trigger to fire. There you go. They make wrist strap releases. They make handheld releases. There's a smorgasbord of these out there, different types. Just a handheld release. Um, a lot of people find you can draw more weight comfortably with a release like this because basically it's just hooking it on. And it's a grip it, rip it kind of thing. You don't have something wrapped around your wrist, kind of like cranking a lawnmower. You, when you get your hand on it, you can just pull it. Nice. So I feel like I can pull more poundage comfortably with a release like this. Um, they make releases just like this that have thumb trigger. This is not a thumb trigger, but most of them would have a, a peg right here where when you draw back, instead of using an index finger to trigger it like you would a release like that, yeah. you would just have a thumb trigger that you squeeze the thumb on. Or this is a straight up hinge release. It has no trigger, so it's kind of a learning process to shoot one of these, but it just works on the head rotates around until it pops off. So basically you're just using your back tension to pull through the shot until the release triggers. Can't punch these. That's kind of the biggest thing. A lot of people get into trigger punching, 
target panic, not being able to hold the spot they want to hold the pin on the spot they want to shoot at. This is kind of eliminates that. Gives you something that you can't punch and force to go off. So nice. Yeah, my grandpa would always get so mad at me. He would put a uh like he wouldn't put a bullet in the chamber and watch you jump and watch me squeeze the tree. Yeah, we go to the range. He'd be like, "All Been right, there, here, done that. here you go, grandson. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about here. Just shoot this like you normally would." Yeah, I'd put it up. I, I you know, be sticking my tongue out, doing all the, everything I shouldn't yeah. be doing. Get ready to shoot. Get ready to shoot. Get ready to shoot. And then click like that, and you lean into it, and he busts you right yep. there. You oh, just yeah. bust you so bad. He's like, "Buddy, when you pull the trigger, nothing's supposed to move." You are grabbing the trigger. Yep. You got to ease onto it. And it's kind of the same thing. It is. Anticipating the shot. And that's what uh, is probably the biggest issue most people have when they're shooting. Um, uh, kind of shooting a handgun. You don't have a prop. A lot of guys that's getting into archery, you know, shot rifles before. You shoot a rifle, setting up on sandbags, a bench. And it's really easy to squeeze a trigger when a crosshair is sitting on something and it's not moving. But with a bow, when you're holding it out, no matter how steady you are, your pin is always going to be moving just a little bit. And it's so hard to slowly squeeze the trigger for a lot of people. Their brain tells them to punch it as the pin drives by the dot they want to hit and just cause a, a quick reaction. Yeah. So. That's not the way to be accurate, folks. It's a long learning curve, um, being able to squeeze a trigger on a bow and shoot it properly. I can't do it, so I'm not going to say I can. That's why I shoot these. I taught myself how to shoot these years ago. That was my cure for target panic. And I hunt with it, shoot it all the time, have no issues. But I see people with target panic all the time. We'll, we'll see what you end up doing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never panicked ever. I'm not a panicker, and I've never been panicked. <laughs> <laughs> Fast bows used to be 180. That's right. If you could get 200 feet per second back in the day, you were screaming. <laughs> and now... A legit hunting setup for some people, 310 to 320 is going to be about your top end hunting speeds. So get on up there. The sights on a arrow, on a, on a bow. Right. What are you, what do you, because like, I know how the front and rear sights on a gun work. What, right. What are we looking through here? So here you have a front sight that's attached to the riser of the bow. It has your aiming points on it. Your rear sight on a bow is inside the string. It's a peep sight that you look through. At full draw, the peep sight will be level and you can see straight through the peak down to your pins. So you're looking through the peak, through the, what is that called again? Just your front sight, your front sight. sight. And that's how you get everything lined up, boom. That's, that's right. Okay. All right, so does that mean it's time to shoot this thing? Um, pretty close. Ben then finished the final steps of customization of my bow for me. I never realized how custom these things were until now, but he measured the perfect draw length for me and adjusted the peep side accordingly. He made custom arrows for that draw length. So now I have a custom bow with custom arrows that all perfectly fit me. And it was finally time to get out on the range and shoot. Would you like for me to retrieve you an arm guard to start out with? I'll be all right. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll, right. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Just remember not to lock that arm out, and you shouldn't hit your arm. Okay. All right, first shot. Okay. So you got your arrows there. I'll just take one out. Make sure it clicks on the string. Odd feather up. Okay. Or odd vein up. Just like that. Clamp it. That's it. And it just hand stays behind. That's right. Never in front until you're ready to roll. Until you get the full draw, then okay. you slip your finger over there before you squeeze the trigger. Okay. Oh, wow, getting tired. Okay. <laughs> All right. Remember what we talked about as far as getting your nose on the string, peeps out right behind your eye. All right. There you go. Okay. Got my arm in so I don't tear it up. Should be good. And I'm about to take my first shot ever on a bow. Gets there in a hurry, don't it? <laughs> Whoa! That's awesome. We're fairly close. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't too bad. Wow, that's amazing. The only thing you were doing that you need to work leaning back away from the string a little bit. Don't be scared to get that string up against your face. All right. 
Dude, oh, that is awesome. It's fast on, on 58. Woo! This is awesome. Pretty cool. This is like a dream come true, honestly, for me, man. When I was a kid, like Robin Hood was my favorite. I would make bows and you know, bows from sticks when I was yep. a kid and like yarn. And most and of them none broke. None of them worked good at all. No, I broke most so. of mine. Oh, that's a smoking fast bow. Dude, really is. This is amazing. Mr. Ben Cox. Yes, sir. He'll help you out. Come up here to Hoover Tactical. Thank you again, man. Uh, Anytime. You've given me so much time, so much info. And, this and there's is plenty more. You're there just you, getting started. Yeah, yeah, so. man. I don't even know what I'm doing yet. So thank you so much. Yes, man. sir. And that is it for this week's episode. Thank you so much for checking it out. Every week I highlight a different nonprofit and the nonprofit of the week this week is Best Buddies. Best Buddies is the world's largest organization dedicated to ending the social, physical, and economic isolation of the 200 million people with intellectual and developmental disabilities around the world. Best Buddies helps foster one-on-one -on -one relationships, integrated employment, uh, leadership development, and inclusive living conditions for those with special needs. I got involved with Best Buddies in college, and I got paired up with two awesome people in my community, and little did I know that we would become lifelong friends. Out of all the things that I'm proud of doing in college, Best Buddies is the thing I am most proud of. Uh, you benefit, your Best Buddy benefits, it's a great thing. Go to bestbuddies.org for more info. I've got some great guests coming up from CrossFit to politics, from psychology to singing. We're going to be covering it all. I've got some really good guests lined up for future episodes. Uh, for all the links and for more info and episodes, you can go to Adler.tv. Be sure to leave a comment or a review on iTunes to help support the show if that's something you want to do. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. I will see you next week. You can tell I'm getting tired. Or, 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 or slap out. <laughs> you wish you sure you don't want me to crank the weight down just a little? <laughs> no, that's no problem. No struggle in one bit. <laughs>